Hi. Uh, I feel a little ambivalent. Uh, you often in the past have said that um, if you don't feel something that you should, don't worry, it'll get bigger. And, uh, and then you make the story of the person who's uh, jumped out of the airplane without a parachute, and don't worry, it'll be over soon. <laughs> and uh, I feel a little bit sometimes like that person because, you know, I've created some or I've manifested some events in my life since the middle of June which had been one, you know, health crisis after another. And uh, culminating with uh, about three weeks ago being diagnosed with stage four cancer. And, um, you know, not a good prognosis. And yet, on the, on the other hand, I've never felt happier than I have since, or in, in recent memory, I've not felt happier than I have since the diagnosis. I mean, I feel hopeful and positive. And focused. And focused. That's what something like that does for most of you. Yes. Is that it causes a clarification of what you want and somehow gives more impetus to focusing. So when you focus, you feel better than ever because there's more energy moving than ever. But when you lose your focus, then you feel worse, which is the feeling of falling out of an airplane with no parachute. Right. So my question is, how can I get in, t you know, I mean, to backtrack to, you know, the first having a, a burst appendix in June, how do I get back to paying attention? What guidance can you give me to pay well, attention? Well, here's the thing. We think you're paying attention. Your attention has been gotten. So now what you want to do, this is the real benefit of something sort of blatant and obvious manifesting. When something manifests and we call it for what it is, we don't call it frightening, terrorizing cancer. We call it cancer indicator of vibration. It's a vibrational indication. Vibrational indication. So when you stop for a moment and you think about how this indication feels, how does it feel? And then you ask yourself, what other areas of my life or what other instances in my life have I felt that same emotion? Because there are plenty of them. In other words, a vibration going on, a vibration going on, a vibration going on, an emotion corresponding, emotion corresponding, emotion corresponding, ignoring it all, ignoring it all, ignoring it all, ignoring it all, manifestation. But how the manifestation feels and how you felt moving into the manifestation are all the same. So once a manifestation has happened and you stop and you identify how how does this manifestation cause me to feel? What do I feel? And then you are able to look into your day-to-day -day thought process and identify, oh yeah, I felt that way over that thought and I've been feeling that way over that thought and I've been feeling that way over that thought. Then you realize you can get to the root, which is the thought, which is the cause, and shift it and then the indicator has to shift too. When you see it, as an indication of something that can be changed is a whole other thing as seeing it as a proclamation of something that can't be changed. And that's where we are vehemently in disagreement with physicians who ever pronounce anything unchangeable or incurable because it is only in ignorance that anyone would ever say that. They must not understand vibration and they must not understand vibrational indicators and they must not understand the power of the focused mind and they must not have been paying attention to the variety of different prognoses have that, have, that have occurred and the outcomes that have happened. In other words, there's so much variety because there's so much different focus, you see. So you can play it out any way you want, really. 
So how does this diagnosis feel? Don't go back to the, the string of events because where you are is where you are. So how does this manifestational indicator feel? What's the emotion that you feel around it? <clears throat> well, right now, I feel very hopeful because I feel focused. Yes, you do. And we can feel that. L let us rephrase the question more effectively. What was the first knee jerk reaction that you had? Uh, what did you settle into pretty quickly around the diagnosis? What was the emotion? Uh, I better pay it. I better shift some of my energy awareness. But before yes. that, well, it, it kind of uh, felt as if I felt as if I knew it was coming, and this was kind of like uh, we agree. But before that, in other words, we're having a hard time prying this out of you, which is the not paying attention to how you've been feeling along the way, and so you're still unwilling to acknowledge how you feel, even when this indicator is there. This is sort of the same sort of thing going on. But how did the diagnosis hit you? What did it feel like? Well, I honestly, I, when it, I heard it, I felt a little numb. I did not feel frightened. Um, so you say you weren't surprised. No. Did you feel validated? Did it validate something that you saw coming? No, that's not quite the right word. Did it feel disappointing? Were you disappointed in yourself for not creating better? No, but it, it felt as if uh, it was an indicator of me not moving forward in my life on a certain level. So you jumped to the indication. So for you, more than it being a frightening diagnosis that made you fear for your longevity, you took it as an indication of not effective creation. Yes. And also uh, of not paying attention to uh, a joyful aspect of my life, the joyful aspects of my life. You've skipped a whole phase here, but that's all right. In other words, you jumped right into what the indication means. So now you can do something about that, can't you? Yeah. In other words, that's the reason that you're so calm and collected about it even now. You've already become solution oriented. Yes. And you've already defined what it is that you want to uh, clean up. Yeah. Now, when we talk about cleaning something up, we're not really talking about going back and cutting out what's wrong or even removing it from your vibration. We're just talking about focusing in a more effective way. So what kinds of things have you decided that you're going to do on what subjects are you going to more effectively focus more joyfully? Well, m my relationships with uh, my family and I've started to do that. In fact, the night before my diagnosis, my daughter, uh, Tatiana, my young, youngest, uh, took me as, aside and had a talk with me and basically told me that she was um, concerned because she hadn't seen me happy in such a long time, that you know I wasn't my usual self, that I had sort of lost myself by not being joyful. I mean, she recognize that in me and she's 14 and uh, so I I realized she was right how do you wake yourself up into more joy in other words as you're visiting here you're calm and you're cool you're not even very aggravated or agitated about something that most people would be feeling stronger emotion about so would you say that you've deliberately leveled your emotional response over time, would the people who have known you for a while find you even tempered and sort of tame in response to life, or would they find you more vivid? I don't know. That's a good question. What do you think? Um, calm. They think of me as calm. What do you think is the cause of energy moving faster? In other words, when someone says they're stuck, we want to demonstrate, I want it, but, I want it, but, I want it, but. Yes, no, pros, cons. In other words, stuck is 
just being so very objective and thinking about all sides of things that even though energy attempts to move you don't let it move very far before you counter it and so it's a sort of calm experience then there is I really know what I don't want so I really know what I do want so those are more highs and lows a person that is doing a lot of that those who know them would call it a sort of roller coaster experience in the early days of your life were you exposed to someone who had strong highs and lows in oh, there yes. and did those highs and lows upset your apple cart and everyone around you enough that you decided that you were going to be different from that perhaps and so did you decide that you were going to sort of be even in your thinking and and whether you were feeling it or not you were not going to display it in a way that it was upsetting to anyone else well I don't know if it was that consciously arrived at, but that might be the case. It is. <laughs> it is. And so, isn't it interesting that your 14 year old tuned in, tapped in, turned on uh, sensitive daughter, even though you've done your very best to not offer any emotions that are upsetting, is still upsetting because because and this is really something worth talking about on the other end of the I know what I don't want is a I know what I do want in other words there is a lot of life to be lived in this vibrational range isn't there yes. and sort of putting a lid on it so that you're only vibrating like this can sometimes squelch what's really going on within you mm -hmm. and we think that's at the heart of this in other words this is going to sound a little strange and sound a little off topic but it isn't it's right on the nose in terms of what's going on here sometimes when people talk about people who have split personalities or people who have delusions where second and third and fourth personalities sort of squirt out and we say it's a byproduct of attempting to control but stronger forces summoning them out anyway and in what may sound odd that is what's going on here in other words even though you did your level best to suppress any ripple in your vibrational field your body is expressing the ripple in your vibrational field even though you have been unwilling to acknowledge the ripple which makes your opening comments to us just so perfect as you acknowledge that you've heard us say that if you've got emotion going on and you're not aware of it so you don't do something about releasing the resistance in it that the resistance will become more so now you've come to that clear awareness and this conversation didn't really help much clarifying in some sense so now let's get right to the heart of what we're talking about here so you could say I realize now that I have underlying vibrations of resistance that I haven't been identifying and soothing that clearly are there because the manifestation indicates that they are and so now now that I'm aware of it and now I'm more sensitive because of the culmination of all of this I'm gonna pay more attention to how my thoughts feel on a moment-to-moment -moment, day to day basis and I'm gonna soothe them as they come up and you have plenty of time to do it the reason that you feel calm is because you are not at risk the reason you feel calm is because this is an opportunity for you to figure out um, what this vibrational mix between you and you really is do you count yourself as a teacher uh, sometimes yes well we feel that from you and sometimes we want to say this to this room full of teachers <clears throat> you are very well-meaning and you care so much about others but often you don't admit to your own vibrational discord for fear of how it will look to others sometimes and that's really the opposite of what you're wanting to teach you want to be real you want to be real that's what your daughter is saying to you I, I want you to be real I want to feel your joy and I don't mind being aware of your discord either just be real don't stuff it don't pretend it isn't there let your emotions guide you vibrationally are you feeling satisfied about it yes be easy about it this will not be difficult for you and we encourage everyone who knows you to make as much trouble for you as possible thank you